with the implementation of our strategy, you will have the initiative in order to finally win the game. The case question we have been asked today is how do you innovate in order to become a leader to drive environmental change to reach a revenue target of 10,000 billion in six years? To answer this question, we have looked at both your current and our proposed strategy. As you can see from the graph here, you are currently an incumbent battery manufacturer that views car battery manufacturing as a separate and not so profitable side of your business. Although you do have concern for environmental change, ultimately profit is your bottom line and nothing can get in the way of that. Through our proposed strategy, Charge Me Up, we propose you make two changes. To the first strategy arm supply, we propose that you move from focusing on car battery manufacturing to developing a universal battery with wide applications. Through the second strategy arm Thrive, we propose that you increase your focus on environmental concern. This allows you to move from the bottom left to the top right of this graph, which ultimately allows you to become the leader in innovation, environmental change, and revenue. Let's take a step back and start with the analysis that drove this proposal. Looking at your business, there are two key segments in which the application of your battery can be applied. The first, obviously, being cars, but we also see a clear potential for a variety of other applications. And each of these two segments have key issues. With respect to cars, the key issue is critical mass. As you can see from the graph here, the adoption rate of electronic cars has a critical mass point, where if you do two things, the adoption rate will increase exponentially. Those two things are one, to develop the infrastructure to facilitate the widespread use of electronic cars, and two, to, to change the perception that electronic cars are a novelty, and to change the general societal attitude towards environmental change. If you wish to become the leader in innovation, environmental change, and revenue in your industry, you must take control of these two action points. The second key issue that we have identified today is your product's application. Currently, you're investing heavily in a product that has the ability to be of universal application. But for some reason, you are largely focused on its application in the car industry, when its benefits can extend well beyond that. The key impact of this issue is that in order to reach your targets, be one of those top five companies, and of course drive environmental change, you must look to its other applications. Following this, we've undertaken a customer analysis, and using these two key segments, we've looked at who your potential customers are. Both cars, and in the use of other applications, are heavily influenced by government uh, environmental policy which can conduct fuel uh, which can uh, overtake fuel efficiency and look at specific requirements um, for uh, renewable energy. Under cars, there are specific segments in high to medium and low uh, markets, and these include brands like uh, Jaguar, Honda, and Toyota. But looking at other applications, we see key potential in medical, military, and energy saving systems. The key to this analysis is that if you drive adoption in both of these fields, not only do you reach critical mass, but you can also fulfill your environmental aims. So in light of this analysis, we've developed a two-hour strategy called Charge Me Up, which consists of survive and thrive. Let me cover how survive works. We propose you do three things. First, that you develop a universal battery and that you release its patents to your competitors. Secondly, that you work alongside car manufacturers to put the universal battery in all of their cars. And at the same time, you build charging stations for this universal battery at key city locations. And thirdly, we propose to develop the most cost efficient and effective plug to charge these universal batteries and that you maintain the patent for that plug. Following this strategy will allow you to become the leader in innovation and revenue three key reasons. First, the strategy recognizes that batteries should not be your key revenue driver because as competition increases, they will increasingly become a low margin good. 
good. Secondly, the strategy recognizes that it's more important for you to develop critical mass for your universal battery. And this, if we go back to our key issue, is achieved in two ways. First, by developing the infrastructure, which you achieve through building the charging stations. And secondly, by changing societal perceptions, which you do by working alongside the car manufacturers to have them put their, your universal battery in all of their cars and not just one of them. Thirdly, you reach a stage where you have critical mass for your universal battery, and this is where you can drive revenue by becoming the monopoly provider of the key component that, to use your universal battery, which is its charging plug. You can become a monopoly in providing this plug because you have the most experience, you have the most time in dealing with the universal battery, and you hold the patent for that plug, which you will not release to your competitors. This will drive revenue because the plugs represent not only a higher margin product, but also your key revenue product. The second key uh, arm of this strategy is called trust, and we suggest you implement three key steps. Firstly, divesting from Ally MH, as well as implementing your battery in the homes of your consumers. Secondly, uh, providing your batteries across other applications, including military and hospitals. And finally, and quite key to this arm of this strategy, is the lobbying of local and national governments in terms of adopting renewable energy targets and also increasing regulation on fuel efficiency. Now we look at why you should implement this arm of the strategy. In divesting an ally image, you are reducing your reliance on this old technology that is going to be phased out in 10 years anyway, as well as implementing uh, your batteries into the homes of consumers. You are prompting a positive attitude towards renewable energy um, and securing power sources, and this drives environmental change. In terms of the second arm of this strategy, in which you seek other applications of your battery for military and hospital, you are able to drive revenue as you expand the market of where your battery is applicable. And finally, and what is key to this strategy, is the lobbying of local and national governments. Purely investing your battery into an electrical car market doesn't solve the key issue of why you created the battery in the first place, and it's to reduce reliance on fossil fuels as you are literally just shifting the problem up the chain as you charge your batteries off the grid which is made uh, um, where electricity is sourced from coal and other non-renewable energy sources. Through this arm of the strategy, you are able to implement tangible change to uh, fix this key problem that is not solved in your current strategy. Uh, thank you and I now pass the floor to Nathan and Kandak to do your finance and implementation. Our strategy of charging me up looks firstly to capitalise on the electronic mark car market through supply and build that into a wider use through Thrive. Kenart will take you through the implementation of how this of these strategies will be made up and I'll take you through the finances as well as the environmental impact of this strategy and wider use. Our first strategy, Survive, consists of three key arms. Firstly, we propose you to create a universal car battery. Currently, the way that car battery manufacturers uh, work is they create a partnership with a specific car brand, be it Toyota or Honda. How by creating a universal car battery, they can be implemented in all types of brands, you are no longer restricted in your innovative capabilities by specific partnerships. The second thing we propose is that you change the perceptions of what it is to drive an electric car. In order to do this, we propose two things. Firstly, you should target low to mid-range end of cars. The reason for this is that from the consumer's perspective, the two key reasons they don't purchase an electric car is firstly cost, and secondly, because there is a stigma that exists around driving cars such as the Toyota Prius. So by targeting low to mid-range cars, you can now allow cars to be cheaper. But on top of that, Rather than producing specific unique cars like the Toyota Prius who are identified as being the electric driven car, you can allow all cars to slowly move towards being electrically driven, making that the future. The third part of the strategy is to develop a unique plug which can only be implemented with your technology. The reason for this is that by developing a universal car battery, the margins are very, very slim. 
So what we propose is that after implementing our strategy, you release the patents for this technology to be publicly used so that all car battery manufacturers will begin to use this technology. However, you must retain the patent for this plug, which is high margins, so that in the future, you can make much more money by releasing these, these plugs, which we use by all car battery manufacturers. In terms of the implementation of the strategy, over the space of six years, the first thing you need to do is research the compatibility of your current battery with all the different car brands. Then you can begin to develop the universal car battery. You can then begin to create the hubs of power charging that I've just spoken about. And we propose you do this in a staged process, first starting at places like Shanghai in China at a supermarket, where people can come and charge and see that driving an electric car is a hip and innovative thing to do. After this, you can then release the patent for your technology and then begin to monetize upon the, the patent for your unique product. The cost of this strategy firstly come in an increased research and development. We want you to increase research and development on this universal battery and on these plugs to 20% in order to be the market leader. We see reductions in the cost of producing these engines going forward. Secondly, we look to the rollout of these charging stations. So at an approximate cost of $1,000 per charging station. By 2030, we want these available in 20% of car parks around the city. This is going to look to drive demand for not only electric vehicles, but for our products in the electric, in the plug market. And that's where we drive revenue. So in terms of the overall picture of the electric car roll over the next six years and then moving on to 2030, we see that we want an increased number of electric cars from 2% of the market currently, moving towards 5% by 2020, and then we want it to be 50% by 2030. This is an innovative technology which is good for people and good for the environment, and there's no reason that, that can't happen. Secondly, we want our company to take an increased share of this market. And by having these technologies such as the plug, we become more compatible, and therefore we look to take 35% of the market by 2030 and be a market leader in these technologies. Our second strategy, Thrive, proposes that you use your universal car batteries for uses more than just a car in a multitude of uses so that the future is worldwide truly environmentally friendly. In terms of developing the strategy, we have three key parts. Firstly, we need to divert away from your assets and LIMH development batteries. The reason for this is you have extremely high fixed costs in these assets. And in the future when the world becomes purely using electric batteries, this is going to be a very strong restriction on your ability to expand and innovate. After diverting away from these assets, you can then use these assets to further develop the universal car battery and implement these into households around the world. The second part of the strategy is to develop strong connections with the US and Chinese government so you can drive innovative changes in regulation. The way you propose to do this is by providing cheaper discounted batteries to both hospitals and the armies. For example, if the army needs to go overseas and they can use a battery when they run out of light, or for a hospital who has a power shortage. The reason we propose you do this comes to our third strategy arm, through which you can use this relationship to drive regulatory change to make governments increase the rate of uptake of electric cars, which has two impacts. Firstly, you are seen as being a much more environmentally friendly brand, and you can drive revenues for your products. In terms of the timeline for implementing the strategy, we also propose you to do this over a space of six years. The first thing you need to do is, as before, develop your universal car battery, but then you also need to develop a range of batteries which can be used in smaller, less powerful versions. You can then develop key connections with the US and Chinese government, start supplying them with these batteries, and then expand your operations and continue to innovate and develop your patents to stay the most innovative company in the world. So the core goal of this is seeing that environmental change is an opportunity for us as well as a revenue driver. So we look to reduce carbon emissions in two areas. Firstly, through the car fleet and the emissions they make. 
We want to reduce emissions now from a level of 1500 on the overall fleet to 800 by 2030 through the outflow of these electronic vehicles and its wider use in our strategy of Thrive. We're going to reduce overall carbon emissions through uses in the home, in military and in hospitals down by 30% by 2030 and this is going to be a real driver of our strategy. How this flows into an increase in revenue by 2020 is that we see our first strategy of survive makes up 75% of the gain in revenue by 2020. This is through our plugs and through an increased proportion of cars that hold our engines. Secondly, through our strategy of Thrive, we look to have these partnerships in military and through homes which really drive revenue in this year. That makes up the final 25%. In considering the strategies for this company, our main goal is to drive revenue at the same time as driving environmental change. For that reason, we've proposed a few alternative strategies or build-on strategies, the main one of which is partnering with an electricity provider to drive the uptake of solar energy using our battery packs in homes. I'd now like to hand you back to Alex and Brittany to take you through. So to summarize today, we've come to you with a vision to make you the leader in your industry. And we've defined being a leader in three things. Innovation, environmental change, and ultimately revenue. With respect to innovation, we've told you that you not only have to innovate your product through the universal battery, but also that you have to innovate your business model through releasing the patents for your low margin product, which is the universal battery, and retaining the patent for your high margin product, which is the plug for that battery. The two work together once we achieve the critical mass. With respect to becoming a leader in environmental change, we've recognized that solving the issue for cars is not enough, and that you need to use this battery in other places, such as the military and the hospital, and ultimately work alongside the government to, in fact, make a tangible change across all layers of environmental change. Following or becoming the leader in these two areas allows you to become leader in the The future for how you can apply a battery in the electric car market is clear. Every battery manufacturer wants their battery in every single car. The future is that every car operates on an electric battery. And while we have this as a key goal, we see our future as even bigger, with the battery's application into a wide range of different areas. With the implementation of our strategy, you will be one of these top five companies that make it in this industry and ultimately win the game. Thank you, and we now open the floor to questions. So I heard uh, there was a teaching uh, strategy. I heard uh, the electric property place. Um, but uh, how do you make others agree on a common standard to make up your so-called universal factor? Because, uh, I mean, industry standard takes ages. And, uh, I mean, what could you do to, to agree with all the competitors to come up with this standard that they can describe? It's a fundamental, if I understand you rightly, about how we can change the perception of our battery benefits. Um, it's a fundamental in this industry is the capability of our technology. And what firstly we want to do is increase the research and development to make ours the best. Um, and that will hopefully drive them to uptake our battery where it's applicable to the manufacturers and both across the industry. If we open up a patent for our engine, we allow others to use that sort of technology as well. Um, further to that. So we're trying to do it through technological expertise to secondly open up our ability or their the key goal being to change engines towards uh, environmental friendly versions. So we open up our patents to them. We basically look to increase the rollout on the whole. If it's more environmental friendly then that's succeeding. To add on to that, in order to ensure that range of companies will see us as being the universal standard. We're actually releasing our patents after a couple of years, rather than immediately, so that we can prove the concept and we can develop our own relationship with companies.
companies to show they really do like our product. And then we'll release, release the pattern so people can already see that the concept has been proven to be excellent. But just building on that, I was thinking about the same lines a little bit more, more from a cost perspective. Obviously, presumably creating a universal battery, uh, which you mentioned about 20% increase in the R&D, which will reflect the, you know, um, the, the production cost of that you know, battery, right? In the meantime, all the companies are <coughs> working on innovation to reduce the cost. And I, I presume they will basically get, get into a much cheaper cost, right? Again, I'm still questioning the, 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 the key unique selling point of convincing those companies who reduce their cost massively, where you maybe slightly increase your cost for a universal one, to replace that you know, and, and bring them into a common standard. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's an area that I'm, I'm, I'm I mean, in response to that, I would say that the beauty of your customer is that there are only a limited number of car manufacturers in the world. You can probably name them with two hands, right? Toyota, um, Lexus, um, Honda, and the BMW, Mercedes, etc. Our strategy involved working with not just one of them, which is what all the other suppliers are doing, but working with all of them. And in doing that, we take away the very limited number of car manufacturers and we slowly shift them towards this universal battery. And it comes to this point where if our suppliers don't adopt universal battery, they'll have no, they'll no longer have any car manufacturers to work with, and they'll lose um, that side of the business altogether. Is that sufficiently answer your question? So, I told you, given that when you propose a, an alternative channel, basically to to, to uh, market your your battery as well, which which is the other channel, which is fine, but I think it's, the main driver is still the car. And I think, you know, I'm still trying to understand what, what's your key strategy to basically convince them, A, from a cost perspective, B, from their past investments to reduce their cost perspective, right? Okay. And, and yeah. shift their, you know, so-called cheaper, in my opinion, and best compatible from their perspective for their sort of cars, best compatible battery yeah. with your universe. I'm just trying to understand a little bit more specifics on what's your strategy to Right, and you have only six years, if I'm not mistaken, in the initial part of that. Set, right? So I have one response to that, and then we'll another. Um, to kick it off, I would say that if you look at, say, Toy Toyota's current car range, they are only one that uses an electronic engine, that is the Prius, and all others use a different type of engine. But the way other suppliers work currently is that they say to Toyota, if you want electronic engine in all your cars, we have to start from scratch. and develop a totally different type of battery for every different type of car. On the other hand, we are saying we're developing a universal battery that we put in every single one of your cars. That instantly creates a cost reduction for because they have to conduct less R&D to figure out how to use that new battery, and that will give them an idea of the of the market. Sitting to that, cost is one incentive for a company to make a car. Um, in, in this industry with electronic motors, you also got technical aspects to it. So with how quickly that, that motor can charge is obviously significant disincentives to buy it um, at the current time. So we target that firstly. Also alongside that cost and alongside that speed of charging, all that company has other expansions. We've got can it fit in all these cars that we're going to make. And we're going to see over that sort of six year period increasingly to 2030 that all these companies are going to want their full range of cars to have that sort of in terms of the cost calculation, how did you come up with that sort of 20%? I mean, from my perspective, you know, all these companies are working in their respective areas to you know, improve their engines, right? Or you know, batteries to reduce the cost. And coming up with a universal sort of battery, isn't it much I mean, doesn't it require much more R and D and then eventually much more manufacturing cost? So we twenty percent is the right reflection? So we based our, our predictions off using Panasonic as an example. Um, we see an industry with a low margin and basically we want to be the leader in the industry. So we we think that that's scalable potential may be a bit reserved. But we if you had to increase it to a level where we would be the leader, then that's what we want to achieve. So the number may be wrong, but the purpose is to be the leader and take the costs and we'll do it. If I can add on to that, the difference between the current and the way we're so currently what you have to do is you have to work with, say, Toyota to develop a specific car that's been to be a Prius. And 
there's two key problems with this. Firstly, it costs a lot of money to design a whole new car. And secondly, from the consumer's point of view, there's a lot of stigma around wanting to drive that car. What we propose is by having a universal battery, you can put that into all your current models to firstly get rid of the stigma. And secondly, you don't have to develop any more specific cars. You have your current car range. You can put the battery in, you don't have to develop any more cars because it's much better. Actually, just a comment is that 
thread that you can do some customization for this to industry. And you can charge them for the customization, right? And you can do the same effect. And then it's more likely that it's. So if you can clarify what you mean by customization. Well, most medical companies, they have a much higher you know, uh, standard